So we're getting geared up and ready to leave this morning. We're going to hunt at Extreme Dream Outfitters with Brad Coyman in Wyoming. And this is my first pronghorn hunt, so I'm super excited. I don't even know what to expect, but I'm pretty confident we're gonna kill a good one. So let's get ready and go. Finally, after 16 hours of driving, we are in Nowhere Bill, Wyoming. Let's meet Brad Coyman and get this hunt on the road. So Gina and I left our place here in Horseshoe Bend, Idaho, roughly about 7 o'clock um, the morning that we were heading over to uh, meet Brad Coyman. Stream Dream Outfitters, and um, we didn't get in till what it was right at 11 o'clock that night. Late. Yeah, it was a long drive, um, you know, roughly 13 hours. Um, you look at it on the map, and from our house to Bill, Wyoming, and you're thinking, well, that's not not that bad. But long journey, of course. We um, we took our time, got to see some good sights. We don't travel that way that much, but. Um, Nonetheless, we, we got there late. Uh, we met uh, Brad at right at 11 o'clock, I guess, something like that. Um, uh, we followed him back to the ranch, got settled in real quick, uh, talked real quick with uh, Rod Notstein there at Tree Limb uh, and Sword Sites. Uh, of course, those guys we hunted with that group, um, you know, one of our uh, good affiliates there uh, in the industry. And talked to uh, Brad about uh, setting Gina up on a good water hole, and um, you know uh, we got a little bit of sleep and <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yeah. And I uh, got up the next morning and we were on goat. We were on a lot of goat. It in was, no time. In no time, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, we did uh, did see some some doe muley. Uh, and a fawn, you know, there early on, but uh, nonetheless, it was uh, it was goat everywhere, that's for sure.
the first morning was pretty eventful for Gina. Uh, we got in about 45 minutes before daylight and it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, because right away we saw a mule deer and a fawn and not long after that we had a pronghorn, um, doe and fawn come into the watering hole. Yeah, several. Yeah, we had those five to six mule bucks oh, yeah. off to the east of the blind. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, by Wyoming Fish and Game, uh, the biologists there, you know, Unit 26 is definitely, uh, they have a good population, uh, not only of speed goat, but of, of muley as well. So, you know, it was just a matter of time uh, to the right buck came into the water hole. I guess it was about nine o'clock. I was out glassing this really good buck that was, I don't know, at least a mile away. Uh, the range fighter definitely wouldn't pick him up. But uh, I knew he was a good buck and I was glassing him for, you know, several minutes. And right out of the draw, um, I spotted a, a group of, um, you know, there was five or six, maybe eight, I can't really remember uh, what was going on at that point. Uh, there was constantly, uh, speed goat all around us all the time and then I told Gina I was like get ready one just broke loose and you know when they commit they commit they commit to the water hole they're coming and uh, told her to get ready and I let her take care of it from there yeah he came in um, when he got a little closer and I got a better look at him I was ready but I decided and we both agreed that it wasn't a buck that I wanted to shoot. He was maybe in the 50s. He was in the high 50s probably, yeah. Something like that. But um, So we decided to pass him up, and we just enjoyed watching him. And then before we know it, Shane says, get ready again. And um, so I got ready, and this buck, when I saw him, I knew <laughs> I knew he was... That's it, yeah. He was going to get a Magnus. Um, so it it seemed like forever that it happened before I actually pulled my bow back, but yeah, because he came in directly downwind from us, and you know, and you know, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, pronghorn don't have the greatest noses, uh, maybe not, but they still can smell, and I, you know, I I use our ozonics everywhere, anything I'm hunting, I'm using ozonics, and uh, you know. I'm just thankful that we had it running um, because, you know, even though that, you know, speed goat's eyesights are, you know, uh, about the equivalent to uh, the human eye with the uh, eight power uh, binoculars, um, they do have noses and they do have a good sense of smell. Uh, a lot of hunters underestimate uh, their sense of smell, but um, directly downwind, you know, even though you're in a blind, um, I felt certain we were, we were really secure. and. Um, you know, it took him a minute, but he came in. Yep, and I pulled back, and it was, I think that's the closest I've ever shot an animal. It was about eight yards or so, or yeah. something like that. Um, and I shot at it, and it was, we reviewed the footage because it happened so fast, and it ended up. It was a perfect it shot. It was a perfect shot, so it was great.
It was right after, right after I shot the antelope. Next thing I know, Shane's running out of the blind with the camera, trying to get the antelope, you know, running away and trying to get it falling or as far as we could get it on film. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you're you're in a blind and you know they do have superior eyesight, so you know you even though. You know, we had a few of the windows open on the blind. You know, you know, having that the the black um, drop, you know, black. And, you know, I just didn't want to have everything, you know, lit up in there, obviously. And um, just, you know, so I I go out running trying to catch this goat falling, um, and you know, I, I couldn't. I mean, <laughs> those things are Fast. <laughs> the fastest lamb mammal and you know, in uh, North America. So, you know, it, it, it definitely, uh, that was a waste of calls, but I was able to get a little bit of his back glimpsing across, you know, a little bit of the ravine there, but uh, he wasn't that far. I mean, it was, uh, we, we waited, you know, 35, 40 minutes and... That's the worst part, having to wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, I shot this antelope over an hour ago and we waited about 45 minutes and we've been tracking for about 10 and we finally found him. Look at the mass Look on him. This. My first ever antelope hunt was a complete success with Extreme Dream Outfitters. I would recommend them to anyone. Um, just awesome. Look at this kicker on the back. He is awesome. I'm super excited about it. You know, I couldn't have asked for a better experience for my first antelope hunt. Um, it didn't last very long. I mean, it only lasted till about quarter after 10 of my first morning, but I still, even at that, we got to see mule deer and I was able to pass up on a buck and shoot one that I was really happy with. So if you're looking for a pronghorn hunt in Wyoming, I highly recommend um, Brad Coyman with Extreme Dream Outfitters. He really takes the time and does his homework to um, make sure that you have a successful hunt and that you're well taken care of. So right after Gina made short work of her hunt, uh, we went in for lunch and, you know, we had talked about, you know, where maybe I wanted to hunt at and, you know, gosh, I was sitting there thinking, 
well, why wouldn't I want to hunt right back where the same uh, water hole that, uh, you know, Rod Nostein shot a 79 incher out of there. Um, the buck that I was, you know, scoping out was a, was a booner, no doubt. Um, and then Gina just shot her good buck there. We had goats all around us and I'm thinking, hey, you'd be silly if we didn't go back to that hole. And uh, so we did. Um, you know, uh, it just didn't pan out. We had one good buck crest uh, the knoll there coming into the water and hole. And, you know, he just kind of seemed like, you know, he just didn't want to commit. He kind of knew that maybe something was up. And, um, you know, we, that's how the night unfolded. And, you know, and we get back to camp and um, had dinner. And, you know, and I'm thinking, I don't want to give up on that, that hole. So let's try it again the next morning, you know, thinking in the back of my mind that, you know, that, that big buck is, is still out there and, you know, that's the, that's the only water hole around. So, you know, at some point he's got to come in the water. And, uh, um, you know, I was right in that aspect, but, you know, he came in, um, you know, I, I first spotted him um, that morning. You know, he was with the same, same does. Uh, I think he was with four. Um, you know, came in out of the east and went up to the draw and, and came in from the south. Um, and you know, when he when he was coming in from the south, I'm like, oh geez, <laughs> he's coming right back in from the same position that Gina's buck came in from. And um, that was a little bit of a task for me to to get situated to get on her buck. But um, he came in right at 40 yards, um, and you know. It was just, you know, just not having the right position to get on him. I had drawn back what, twice on him, and I just couldn't get a shot with her having, you know, the camera on him. And so, um, you know, at this point, I was like, okay, uh, I'm a little frustrated, and so let's move on to another water hole. So we went about 12 miles away and set up, um, you know, for the evening hunt, and. Uh, on the way over, you know, we seen, you know, goat were everywhere. They were definitely watering. It was hot. Uh, we knew it was going to be on that evening. To that blind that was 12 miles away I mean we saw a lot of a lot of good bucks um, we got set up in the blind and it was no more than what 20 minutes I mean goat just started following in from everywhere um, it was like goat mayhem <laughs> I mean they, they were just everywhere and the mule deer. oh yeah and the there mules was, yeah it was, it was just I mean it, everything it was just so hot that everything was water and you know we it was just like holy cow then all of a sudden you know it was coming out of the west um you know i spotted that big wide buck coming in and uh you know he came in and he was committed he came right in and uh you know we just couldn't get a shot at him um 
he he walked on out and you know just got completely out of range and you know the whole you know the whole set you know uh, we were seeing goat coming and going coming and going and you know it probably wasn't but about you know right after 20 minutes after that goat had had walked on out of there um, you know I seen a, a spot of the goat you know um, it was out pretty much to the north of us and and I'm thinking wow that's a good buck that is a good buck and you know just kept seeing smaller bucks coming in and um, just everything circling out around range and um, you know it was right before dark um, you know I kept looking you know back behind us and I'm thinking oh wow you know uh, this buck is definitely going to come in behind us he's going to come in behind us and um, sure enough one did come in behind us and it was definitely that buck he you know I was watching him and I knew he was going to circle right around us you know if he did come in and uh, you know he came in by himself and you know I uh, I, I told Gina he's coming in and you know, like he literally was like six yards you know um, when I shot him and you know it was uh, it just happened that quick that you know I drew um, you know Gina was in a position that she could not get on him without opening up a window and you know taking a chance of, of making noise or, or whatever so um, we went ahead and I pulled the trigger We got a nice bloody arrow. I plumbed this goat. He was like 10 yards. And uh, holy cow. I think he's a pretty good one too. One thing about it is when they're up on you, they're like right now up on you. We watched him fall. So he's only about... 75 yards, I'd say. Let's check him out. <laughs> hey, we smoked a good goat. A really, really good goat. <laughs> Unbelievable. Good Wyoming speed goat right here. You guys, we've, uh, we've been hunting with Brad Coyman of Extreme Dream Outfitters, and boy, you talk about pronghorn. <laughs> this guy's got pronghorn and good goat. Now this isn't the, the best one, but man, I'm telling you, this thing's got nice, nice cutters on him, nice drawbacks, and he's got mass. This is a this is a real good goat, real good goat. Nice and pretty. Scarred up, been fighting a little bit. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Check out what this Magnus did. Wow, come on over here and check this out. Unbelievable. Did the death spin and boom, he was down. Unbelievable. That's the that's the excellent wound there, man. We did uh we did the uh I mean I plumbed him too, right through the shoulder. Oof. Holy cow. Smoked him. Wow. Unbelievable. That is a good goat. Maniacs Hunt is here with Brad Coyman's Extreme Dream Outfitters. The speed goats we're working on what the third week of August, I guess it was. Um, the rut was just starting to maybe tip, you think? I mean, we're, uh, we're we had some, right now. Yeah, I mean, they were. You know, dogging the does a little bit. Uh, we had a ton of action that's going on. We were capitalizing on a lot of good goats. Um, I tell you, 
if you're looking for some serious speed goat action, uh, Brad's got them here. Extreme Dream Outfitters. Uh, Brad, you want to tell us a little bit about how you guys are making this happen? Well, I got three different ranches. Uh, we totaled just over 144,000 acres. Um, some very prime antelope country here. Um, you guys got to see kind of what we had, the quality. Absolutely. Um, numbers are awesome, and uh, you guys are shooting some awesome, awesome animals. So, uh, future's looking good. Uh, the herd's doing great, and you guys took home some good goats. Yeah, we uh, we definitely did. I, I mean, even the guys there, Tree Limb and Rodney Nootstein, uh, those guys had an awesome week in camp yeah. as well. Yeah, we had eight people in camp and three days. We had two days of rain, but three days after that, all yeah. eight tagged out, so. I mean, that's great. I mean, <clears throat> besides a few cameraman errors, I mean, we were able to <laughs> get some goats down relatively quick. So the thing about it with next year is I'm gonna have to bring the whole entire staff just so I can take a week's vacation. There you go. Um, we'll gladly have you, and there's plenty of out there for you. And I sure do appreciate it. Absolutely, thanks, thanks for Brad. going. You betcha.